all of y'all know? How many of y'all are glad to be here on today? I didn't say how many of y'all are glad to be here on today. Yeah. He woke you woke up this morning. Yeah. He started you on your way. Yeah. He allowed you to see another day. Yeah. He worked the hallelujah. I want you to put your hands in the building on today. And just go through and just think about how good God is. For yeah. so we were created to worship Him. Yeah. It's spirit and the truth. Yeah. Sometimes we just have to forget about what's going on. And when you come into the presence of the Lord, yeah. He gets out of order. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I'll just take a few minutes and just worship Him. Yeah. I'll just take a few minutes and worship Him. Sometimes you have to worship Him in spite of Him. You have to get that push. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
It's a lie. And when you serve God, and when you serve God, you serve God knowing the truth. You know he's a deliverer. You know he was crucified. We need, you know he redeemed you. You know all the great things about him, but yet you don't serve him. You don't give him what you owe him. So you get into a place where there's an empty tomb that's falsified. What you mean, Apostle Lord? See, the tomb looks like it's filled because Christ no longer is in the tomb, right? So there's a falsification. Oh, Lord, that's one word. I just made y'all a good word up. Falsification. Okay, falsification. That means you make up something that's not the truth. And you build a hope as if somebody was in there. So that means you thinking God is still there. Ah. Because things are not turning around in your life the way you have called it to turn around. You think Jesus is still dead. But the reason why Jesus is not operating in your life is because you have made a bell, a false altar, a false God. You got everything before you but God. And God wants to be first. God wants to be first. I don't care how much you pray. If God is not first, you just pray. You just sound good. Come on, somebody. There's a lot of people that sound good. But they ain't praying and they are not electrified and they are not illuminated and they are not edifying and they are not worshiping the truth of living God. They are worshiping because their situations are good. Uh -oh. Yes, you can worship God when your situation is good. But the best way to worship God is the way Jesus worship God. Uh oh, the way Jesus worship God. How did Jesus worship God? And he on the cross. He worship God. He got out there regardless of the pain, regardless of what it looked like. See, y'all run with me now. But if somebody came in here to kill me outside of my church, who gonna run with me? Amen. Jesus. Oh, let's talk about it. Amen. Everybody was running with him until they saw him be what? Oh, they would stop running with him when he would be in the Because they didn't want the last. They wanted his fame, they wanted his fortune, they wanted what he was doing, they wanted what he was getting through, they wanted all the power, they wanted all the, you know, I was with Jesus, but when Jesus had to go through, yeah. who was with him? Who is going to be with you when your real pain is suffering? Only those that truly, truly, truly loves you. Only those. Put a gun to my child's head, put one to mine. I'm not going to let you sit up there and kill my child with my face. Hey, I don't serve God good enough. When I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm going up under the altar and wait on Christ to split the earth. You're not going to kill one of mine in front of me. We all die today. We're going to die today. Because not, not because they're God in me, because I know the God that lives on the inside of them. Amen. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for an army Come on now. that will have not to die for me when I'm doing stupid stuff. But when an enemy comes in like a flood, right. the spirit of the living God, because I step on the scene, that God would not even be able to take my son's life. And I'm just using my child's life because you got to understand that's how God goes. He was like, take it. I'm going to raise him up. I Start to 
live your life all kind of ways. You start doing everything but what God says to do. You start worshiping other things. Come on, your houses, your cars. Come on, your children. You start worshiping everything but the truth and the living God. And that was never the purpose. When I put you in a place of abundance, God is doing something. He said something. When I bring you to a place of abundance, I'm bringing them out of abundance into a place of wealthy, a wealthy place. You got to still love God if you don't have it. Amen. And what happened to them, they got in that lane and they got to, they started prostituting with another God, which was Baal. And they built, built Baal. And they built Baal to be higher than God. These are the children of God who he bought out of slavery. How many of us here have bought us out of a place and yet we go and make something else our God? What do you mean? He give you that husband that you prayed for, but yet now that you come to church. He give you the finances that you prayed for and you go work that job on the side. Come on, somebody. He bring you to the place that you asked him to bring you to and then you start worshiping it and not it. Amen. You know, you thought I was going to teach Gideon. Yeah, Gideon was Gideon, but right now, before Gideon even comes on the scene, God deals with Israel. Amen. He deals with Israel. Come on, Israel was the chosen people of God. Yeah. And every time he brought them out of something, they got back into something else with another God. Yeah, yeah. And what do we do? Come on, let's examine ourselves. Take a minute and examine yourself. And understand that they ain't one of the only when we don't put all of our trust in the God, the God, the creator, the creator of all time, the blueprint, the blueprint creator, he created the blueprint. Everything you see, he created. I don't care what you say, a man. No, he created the man that created the planet. He created the man God gave the man the planet. Come on. So a lot of y'all sitting here dormant with a plan in you because you still got a God. He see the other God. Right. Uh, what you mean? A lot of us don't go to our next. It's because God is already created. Why are you worshiping God? Oh, right. Right. The reason why you're going to stop right now is because there's a God that has been created before he gives it to you. Right. Come on. It could be clothes, it could be shoes, it could be a house, it could be a woman, it could be a man. It could be in your car of your dream, it could be the house of your dream. It could be just doing things that you want to do and not what he wants you to do. So they're in this place, they're in this place, and now they begin to cry out to God. Ain't that how it happened? We begin to cry out to God once we are in trouble alone. They were in trouble before they started crying. Oh, I'm coming up from both sides. You already in trouble. You already in trouble, and you ain't crying yet. Why? Because it ain't got hard enough for you yet. Oh, but I hear your cry. Oh. He rubbed my tongue, never know both sides of Yeah, we do good when we got money in our bank. Yeah, our bank account look pretty good. You do good when it's looking good. But what about when it is just a dollar? And you know that car note is getting ready to come out of there. And you know that dollar getting ready to be a negative something. Come on, somebody. That. That is not when you cry on God. It's when you bought the car. It's when you bought the house. It's when you were in preparation of buying the car. It's when you were in preparation of buying the house. Because you need God to see you through all the notes. Uh, until you get to the next freedom part. That part right there. That's when we tell God, I can't do it without you. And then what? Let, let me bless you right here. That's when you should do some Amen. When you go. Right. Amen. See, the, the, the sculpture of this point is all of the great picture of the point on down in the verses. When he do, when he does deal with Gideon, he dealt with Gideon for the people of Israel. What you mean? Gideon had nothing to do with that. <laughs> he just raised him up for it. Amen. He sent a prophet. <laughs> and then we won't even hear the prophet. I'll tell y'all, don't get excited right now because things can happen. Y'all, she get jealous, but I ain't got nothing to be jealous of you about. My life will blow your world apart by the hands of God. By the hands of God, my life will blow your hands, my your life apart because I don't trust in nothing I have. I understand that all can be gone tomorrow. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord in my goodness, in my good days, in my better days, in my best days, you are my God. I will take my eyes off of you. But this is where they took their eyes off God when they got in the place where the be 
when they were disobeying God. Amen. Doing what we do also. Mm. Come on, somebody. They're doing the same thing that we did. We are doing that. We're telling God we love him only because we got him. Are we hungry? Uh oh. You ain't never been hungry. Uh -huh. He brought up our country to the side. You would think the children of Israel would never be back bondage. The way they kept getting themselves in trouble, you would have thought that they had never ever went through nothing in their lives. But now come back to this point where they have to be in bondage for seven years. Amen. With another God. Yes. Just like Pharaoh. Another year, Jesus. another time. Here we go again. And if you read on down in the story, they go into a 70 year captivity. What do you keep doing, putting yourself in? What are you doing? That God will have a person that will study this story, to study this sermon, to bring it for a highlight. What are you doing that's getting ready to cause you something? Jesus. God is sending forth a prophet right now. God got that other website to tell you what the word of God said, not to tell you what I said, but to tell you what he is saying. He said, you get ready to call on him out of the place of your God. Oh, my God. He's getting ready to shake you in a place of your God. Oh, you have chosen yeah. to find yourself. Yeah. You're sneaky. You're liars. You're manipulators. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you know. When things are not certain for you, you talk about each other. You talk about things. Because it don't go your way. Because it's not happening the way you want to happen. Come on, you get to run in your mouth. You get to say things. You get to be a naysayer. Come on, somebody. You get to be a backstabber. Come on, you get to be a Judas. See, Judas would never ever win the 12. He would win, but he would never ever win. Come on, I need you to understand that. Some people with you, but you never ever been with you. Come on, somebody. This God talking, it ain't got nothing to do with me because I don't know you did, and I said it myself. Come on, somebody. But you were with You never, ever, 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 ever. ever. You were always with another woman. Amen. You just try to look like you will. Amen. Uh, try to see you. You try. You try. You need. You don't know, play the good game, but you're in this right now. Uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, Judas always walk around with a dagger in his back. In his back. Why? Because he was always going to do something. He was already had a manipulated spirit. He was already going to steal and take from the offering. He already had a plan. Come on, somebody. But you choose everything 
by God. So the reason why the world is where it is now is not because God is mad and angry. It's because you have created your space. So now that you've created the space, you don't want this space now because we are never satisfied. We always want something more. We are, we are spiritual beings that do not understand the soulless part of a man or a woman. Amen. So we have gotten ourselves locked up into our own ideology. So we make up our own dictionary and our own thoughts. And we start to make a book of our lives that has nothing to do with God. Yeah. Amen. So where you go, you never ask God why I'm not here. What you do, you never ask God why am I doing it. And God will tell you because you never ask him. You are off the blueprint that I planned. Because you don't know me, so you don't know my plans. It's only when you know God that you know the plans of God. It's only when you know God that you understand why Jesus died for you. And he rose again on the third day. It's only because you know God is that you have the operation of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you and you know how to operate in the Holy Ghost. Right. Come on. That's, this is the essence of God. Amen. And once you get out of the original blueprint, pray you step into your own. Amen. And understand the one thing about me having my own blueprint is I have my own thoughts in there. Nothing to do with God. So, and then I have that thought and say, God say it, and that's a lie. I said, God, I'll never prophesy again if you don't say it. Come on, come on. I'll even throw away apostle death for that apostle in front of my name if you want me to throw it away. Come on, somebody. I need to be deep with y'all on today. God, are you speaking this or is it me? Am I ruling God or are you ruling God? Because when God rules, you know the things of your life the sun was shining in rock because it says in the seventh read to me in Judge 6 and 7 Judge 7 verse 7 and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel that's just 7 I just need 7 and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites then they cry out until the enemy showed up. <laughs> until they was tired of the enemy oppressing <laughs> You didn't cry before then. Yeah, because you had all the So you had two thousand dollars in your bank account as if that was going to last you. Or you had twenty thousand dollars as if that's going to last you. Come on, somebody. When, even when you, with all the money in your bank account, you need God. Amen. Oh, because you had billions in the bank account. No, no. Oh, you had billions in now. You didn't need God. But when God began to eat away, he allowed another God to eat away at your cushion, at your whatever. Then you cry on God. Because it said they cried unto God with, because of the many and not. They were sick of it. Well, you should have been sick of it when you gave them authority in your own land. I will let somebody come to my address and take over my house. That ain't been to happen. Let me tell you something. Lies back upstairs, right? If you go into his room upstairs, he can get up by the hell What's up? And he come downstairs. He come downstairs. What's going on right now? Come on. Because that's what you're supposed to do. If you go in my bedroom, come on. What, what, what's up? What's going on? You're supposed to have a what's going on factor. If you come into his house, why are you coming? Come on. Yo, you don't let any and everything happen without you having a yes or no. Amen. And with a loud explanation. That's right. I can't go to Duke's house without them knowing I'm coming. They may not even be there, or they may be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Amen. I don't do that. <laughs> Come on, I'm not going away to Hampton, Georgia. Now, now they may be in their ground. Why are they in their house and they told them? Uh, don't nobody like you that much. Got this. <laughs> Show up if you want to at my house. I see you up there because my house is smart. Come 
Jesus. got out there with all that money, partying with folks he didn't even know. They hung with him until he had nothing. And they lived on him, man. Now, how many of our people don't live on him? Come on. I ain't even say we can break my hand. Come on. People don't live on me. Come on. I didn't lose my life.
go to him and get the instruction. Amen. Then the Holy Ghost have to wait on Jesus to tell him to tell him something. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. Instruction. Yes. Come on. Y'all remember, he hurt my feelings. They're going to keep on hurting. If he don't hurt it, somebody else is going to wait on hurting. Why? Because God is building that where you don't have feelings or emotions no more. Come on. In order to have the things of God, you got to be a dead woman or a man walking in the natural. You got to be walking 90% of the spirit. Uh oh. That means you did it. People don't want to hear that. Jesus. You can't talk to me in a way. How is somebody talking to you if you got emotions? Uh oh. Can't nobody even build you because your emotions are tied up in the building. What you mean? It takes you to get rid of yourself to get built by God. Because your feelings get ready to be hurt. Your emotions get ready to be told out. You got to, the Bible says, set your face like a flint. Ain't that what it says? Yeah. That means can't never touch Come you, on. can't never move you, but God. Jesus. In order to go to God, God, you, wouldn't, you really want to go out here. A lot of y'all saying you want to have it. But to have it, you got to go through some things to get it. Yeah. 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 Somebody will say, I, I thought I lost my mind. I did. I thought I lost my mind. God said, God, you lost your you didn't need it. Amen. There was three stages of me dying to the flesh. And I, it was mental. It took me through a mental triangle. And the last thing I got was in 2018, in, in August of 2018. And I went on a sabbatical after that. God began to speak to me. He said, if you can feel when you see that man and see that face, then you ain't dead. That means if they still bother you, and they ain't even around you. They ain't just calling their name bothering you. You still alive. And I can't deal with you if you still live. Mm -hmm. I must be to go through Samaria. Uh -huh. Jesus said. There was a woman that had been broken. And she was at the place of being rescued by Jesus. Amen. So he could not go on into town with the disciples. He had to stop. And he had to go through Samaria. So he could make sure that she got the things that she needed. Hell, my God. God told him to go. See, he was dictated by God. God dictated him. He was God was him navigation. You hear what I'm saying? So everything God told him to do. So that's what is so messed up about us. And we're coming to the powerful word and yet go home and think you all of that. You're a king or whatever. Maybe you ain't around yet. You ain't got the things that you desire to have because you're still living. So when you leave here, the streets is your ministry. The Bible says, go to the head.
just not worry about Daisy and Nancy and David and worry about you. And keep yourself on the cross. I need you to stay on the cross. Because God do want to bless you. He do want to bring you into the place that's going with the honey. But he don't want you to do what like they did. He said, listen, they're your example. The reason why people are preaching that is because this is your example, Apostle Deborah. Deborah, this is your example. It's what they did. I don't want you to do. Amen. Yes, I'm going to give you that. But guess what? You're going to be broken to tell them that. You're going you're gonna to be scared to even spend <laughs> When you get it in your account, it's going to take you another 30 days to stop shouting. Not shouting that you got it. But shout it because, like God, how I'm gonna keep it. Come on, show me how I'm gonna keep it. What am I supposed to do with it? How many of y'all will write to the mom? I'm gonna pay my time. Okay, you gave God that, that, that money. You gave God that money. Okay, I'll give y'all. I'm gonna pay my okay, pay. After that, we're mm. What is the plan? Are you gonna go to him, the blueprint maker? And ask him what's next? What's next? Because I'm sure that I don't wanna die with his plans in my belly. That's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to die with a blueprint in your belly and you never ever got to the point. You know, did point A, B, and C, but then we never done. Because you got so excited. God gave it to me. Yeah, he gave it to me, but you can just fall. He told the truth is when you go out in the wilderness, they have they had only a few days in there. We need to stop saying how many days are there. Everybody can change them out in the days. They you heard. So like he just told me he gave me some days in the wilderness. And he told him, he said, I'm going to feed you every day. But don't take extra. Uh oh. Don't take for yourself extra. Because if you do, it's going to fall. They didn't even believe what he said. What would happen to every day? Stay this man up every morning. They wake up. It was wild. Man, he said, I, He go, man, I couldn't eat the food no more. That was, it was over. That, that was over. It's all because they did not trust God. God gave it to you, and you don't trust him. Okay, he tell you, before you build your house, he tell you to go build a house for girls. Oh uh, man, a uh, house for me. Come on. Or uh, he'll tell you to go to Atlanta, Georgia, and, and, and get some, get, clean up the project area, and you're looking at how much the project is going to cost. Oh yeah, that's what y'all do, because you know you thought that was for you. No. For I know the thoughts and the plans I think towards you, the plans of the Lord. The plans of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. We will quote all them short scriptures. And we think it's tied up in our things. No, it's tied up in the things of God. So can I trust you to do what I'm getting ready to bless you with? Oh, that's what it's about. It isn't about you just walk around and drive your business, drive your car, and pack up your house with stuff. Can you imagine how we pack our house with stuff? Spirit of greed. I can tell you the truth. Like, come on. It's for you to do what God tells you to do. Yeah. And then not for you to sit back and say, this is what I've done. And once you do what God tells you to do, Amen. when you give God his plans, he'll give you his resources. Yeah. When you give God your plans, it's going to be delayed because it's going to take something to get your plans. And your plans are getting grafted into his plan. Y'all want to remember that today? Give God some plans. Everybody around you, God. And get rid of people who already in your 